that's the video the customer sent me the boiler sounds terrible so the first thing we're going to do is service this boiler and flush out the heat exchanger so we're going to remove the heat exchanger i'm going to remove the fan we're going to oil that we're going to clean the burner we're going to do the whole lot but in this video we're going to really focus on just flushing the heat exchanger now unfortunately they don't allow certain acids anymore so this will have to be done with just normal lime scale remover I've drained down the whole system because it's it's got an FNE upstairs so we've drained all of that down before you start taking out the heat exchanger you have to drain down there'll still be water in the pipe work so make sure you have a wet vac or something close by I'm removing the fan I'm removing everything just be aware that they, they are rope seals. You will have to change uh, the fan gasket as well. So you will need a fan gasket. They're pretty difficult to come by. So make sure you have all that ahead of time. That is the heat exchanger that we're looking at right now. It's a, a sort of cast iron metal. We're going to undo these nuts here. And once we pull that off, there'll still be residue water. So have something underneath it to catch all the water. Now I'm just going to move the burner out of the way so that I can get those panels out. Once the panels drop, they'll be out of the way of the heat exchanger. By the way, the heat exchanger is very heavy. You don't want it falling on top of those panels and cracking them because then you'd have to go and get new panels. Don't crack those panels because you cannot leave the boiler on if those break. They are essentially stopping the fire from escaping and burning everything. Make sure that you keep those panels intact. So like I said, I've already drained down, but there is still a lot of water in the system. It really helps to have a wet vac. So I'm just getting out anything. I really don't want water spilling anywhere. Once I do this, I want it to be clean. This has been in for so long that it is stuck. So I'm just giving it a bit of a knock just to help break it away. And there we go, it's come out now. This is really heavy, so uh, to be honest, I don't even know I'm doing it one-handed, to be quite honest. Um, it's very awkward with a camera in my other hand. And there we go. We'll see quite a bit of gunk in there. there are, there's actually quite a few solid bits. And that is the blockage. There is still a lot of residue water, so I'm just making sure to get all of it so that it doesn't ruin anything. I've got my plumber's bucket underneath as well. Now what I can do is I can just put my funnel underneath. All the little drips can just go into the plumber's bucket so that it doesn't damage the boiler and doesn't get anywhere else apart from in the bucket. I would normally recommend Spirit of Salts, however they had nothing else, all they had was this lime scale remover. It's pretty much the same thing, we're removing sludge and uh, lime scale. What I'm going to have to do in this instance is knock this heat exchanger around a little bit, vibrate it a little bit just to loosen up the lime scale once this is set in. So I actually left this in for about an hour while I went off to the shops to pick up some parts. When I got back. I got this on my hammer drill. We just want it on hammer only.
lime scale remover sort of splashing out there so it's, it's really vibrating everything you can also get a rubber mallet just knock it with a rubber mallet as well uh, you don't want to break it obviously but you know uh, a rubber mallet oh, would be quite so, good yeah. too and just empty it all out I don't have anything high pressure if you do have something high pressure you could really get a better um, a better job done here unfortunately all I had was gravity so that was a gravity hot tap there and we're just going to absolutely clear out all the lime scale we're going to uh, remove all of the solution as well you don't want to put the boiler back in that was quite foamy as well so we want to make sure that there's no foam left at all after using it and putting it back in this boiler has a rope seal the rope seal has obviously fallen out so we need a silicon this goes up to 1500 degrees so it's going to stick in there okay so it's going to keep that rope seal in place for the minute once it's in place it'll stay there we're going to replace this gasket for the fan so like i said make sure you have this they're pretty hard to come by put that back in along with the heat exchanger screw these on the side it can be really difficult to do this um so if it's in a very difficult position, if the boiler is in an odd position, I wouldn't recommend doing this at all because it's actually really difficult to get that heat exchanger back in place. I would start with just screwing in the right hand side and then screwing in the pipe work afterwards. But that's it, we're pretty much done. We're just gonna fire up the boiler. Uh, we've now switched on the FNE tank so the system is completely filled with water i've bled all the radiators there's no air trapped anywhere before we try firing this and we're going to give it a pop now see if uh, the boiler fires and if we hear that noise it's been a couple of days now the customer hasn't said that they've had an issue and they haven't said that the boiler's making any noise. 